make some of the numbers that we want. Um, so, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you know the system in the US is slightly different in that here you get to veterinary school after you finish high school. Correct? So, in the US, however, you have to do a pre vet program. So, mostly it is an undergraduate program where you have pre vet requirements in animal sciences and animal physiology that people do. So, usually it's a four year program that people do. And then you apply and you are considered for admission into a veterinary <coughs> school. The DBM program is four years, the first two years is roughly the pre uh, clinical curriculum, and the fourth year is the so, for general practitioners, the training, the original training, 35% uh, of the internships and residencies. So people have the choice of going in and sort of specialty practice, into veterinary public health. A lot of them are doing that. It's increasingly becoming popular. The food animal industry is a big drag and draw. A lot of people go into that. Then you have the pharmaceutical and biomedical devices. In the Twin Cities, has the, we, if you look at the Fortune 500 companies, the biggest companies in the globe, 18 to 20 of them are in the Twin Cities. So, for example, the biggest device companies in the world, Medtronic and Boston Scientific and um, um, what's the other one, St. Jude, these are all based in the Twin Cities. And so our veterinary students have a great uh, chance to go and uh, be part of this industry as well. Uh, and all the other organizations and of course the higher education process. So we have, I was uh, struck by what um, Hassan was mentioning that your farms are not close to your campuses. We have a similar situation where the veterinary school is part of a city. Way back Many, 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 many decades ago, it was part of continuous farms, and those farms have gone away. So now, as the city has become larger and larger, these farms are becoming more and more difficult to bring in large animals. So we do have some dairy farms on campus where we do some large animal housing, but we want our students to have the exposure of what it is to be in a real-life large animal setting. So we have done partnerships with either the swine industry, or the human folks, or with the dairy industry, where it is a public-private partnership. So they, the public and private company, pays for the operations and the infrastructure that goes around these centers. So we don't have to pay for that. So that helps us defray a lot of costs. It is expensive to maintain these things. But our students go there housing for them, they just go, it's like regular dorms for them. So our students get to actually practice in these dairy farms where there are thousands of cows. So that's the kind of experiential learning that they need from a practical sense that cannot happen within the college itself, that we are providing to them in this center. So, the clinical training can take place in these private par partnership farms that I mentioned. But also, we have um, a few other places where this happens within our college. One, it is the hospital itself, which we call the Veterinary Medical Center, where Dr. Alessandro uh, is working. This, we see about up to 40,000 cases a year. And for an American public university, this is we probably handle the largest case load in the country. Um, a significant section of that is obviously from animal animals, but we have equine and other small food animals as well that we take. Um, the, for the small animal itself, we're the second largest, the large animal, the fifth largest, but together in terms of cases that we see, we have the largest. The students are also exposed to what happens in the diagnostic lab. The diagnostic lab actually processes about 
about 1.5 million tests. It's the official center for the state uh, uh, appointed by the Minnesota Board of Animal Health. And it's the world largest in the country where any outbreak, all those things are managed here at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, which is actually this um, The Raptor Center, this is another fascinating place. I don't know if you got to see it uh, when you were there. Um, we read about this, this number varies, this is the last number, birds of prey, the eagles and hawks. Uh, a lot of them, because of shooting, hunting is allowed in Minnesota, they eat the dead carcasses, deer and all, what have you, and the lead goes into the bodies of these big large birds and they become sick. So we actually treat these birds and we rehabilitate them back. So then they're released back uh, not all of them can be released because some are permanently sick. Um, all the work that the wings have been uh, messed up and they can't fly anymore. But more importantly, we create these educational programs, about 1,300 a year, to the general public, where over 200,000 people per year are taught about what these birds are, why are they so important. And it's fascinating that. We are trying to work with young children, go to schools, and you create that fascination for animals at that stage. And a lot of them want to become veterinarians when they listen to these kinds of success stories of how we can help animals. Um, the equine center, again, um, 